and we are live i do believe it says that we're live um it doesn't say we've got anybody watching us at the moment but i'm sure that'll shoot up in just a second uh good evening and welcome to raconteurs news the uh we're raconteurs news and we don't know why and uh as, as usual oh we've had a good weekend i'm oh, shooting yeah. for wednesday again oh good good man good man um yeah uh good whatever yeah hope you've had a good weekend and uh that you've uh, all your wishes have come true i've got aid with me he's as usual good evening aid how's your weekend been mate yeah all right mate good seeing my mum uh had the dog for the day and yeah good magic 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 well you all know our guest is tonight and uh, we're probably just going to get straight into it, I think, because we we, um, we cut off from last week and we'd not really talked about everything that we were going to talk about. We were pretty much overloaded with all Australian uh, bushfire type stuff. So uh, now we didn't get into Iran and Iraq. So good evening, Rob Halford, or good morning to you, um, uh, where you are and on this tu lovely Tuesday morning. I don't know about lovely, but it is morning. Well, I don't know, do I? I'm, it's night time here. I don't know what it's like tomorrow morning. Yeah, you do. Well, that's a true story. So, but, uh, you, you know how you're saying you hope we got all our wishes on the weekend? Did fucking Santa come through town or something and I missed him? Santa? Well, he's the one that gives you all your wishes, any? I didn't find any bottles on the beach because I'm nowhere near the beach. Although I did hear that uh, Abe got called the son of a beach, but I think that's different. It is very different. The the, the words that uh, you know, he, Ad isn't the son of a beach. Um, yeah. but he, he has had some. He's had had some. Uh, he's had, had some, fucking hell. I fucking swallowed it like a a worse thing that I've than I've already got that I've got. You know what I mean? It's like it's worse. Um. Yeah. Well. Anyway, Rob. I, you know that's interesting. All those words he was just saying is English. I understood all the words. But in the sequence he used them in, I've got no idea what he's on about. He swallowed this and so I thought, what the fuck's he on about? I still don't know. Oh, all the he words were there, they just weren't in the right order. Oh, is that what it is? Is this like a fucking jigsaw puzzle? I've got to figure it out to be able to answer him. Yeah, it's the pulp fiction of, um, of, of YouTube broadcasting. So I get, get all my words in a different way, and then you have to put them together. How about, yeah, no. Uh, we can see her again this week. We can see her this week uh, as well, which is uh, always a pleasure um, seeing your face. And I know that a lot of people that were on commenting were commenting that they couldn't see you. So uh, um, you, you've got your camera sorted out. And uh, and if it looks like you're looking above the screen, it is because you're projecting this onto your wall, aren't you? That's it. What a bunch <laughs> of nosy bastards. Well, I couldn't see him. We want to get him on the fucking camera. It's like uh, okay, all right, no problems. So I'm on the I'm on the camera now. So there's no more complaints. And see, oh, hang on, I'll put the see this. We've even got fucking Judas Priest watching to answer your question, Aid. You nosy wee bugger. You're no. a nosy wee bugger. Yes. Well, that, yeah. Go on. No, that's it. Oh, no, he, was, he was just talking about uh, Rob Halford, who of course is from. Uh, uh, was he Tamworth all right in the middle of Birmingham or Wolverhampton, sort of the Midlands anyway? Walsall. Uh, I'm sorry? If you talk about the other Rob Halford, the more famous one, he's from Walsall. Walsall, that's right, yeah. Yes, yeah, Walsall, Sutton Coldfield. Yeah, yeah. Because in yeah. that area, Walsall, Sutton Coldfield and fucking West Brom, all of that, you got Judas Priest and you got Black Sabbath. That's the area, Aston. Mm-hmm. What, imagine that, Judas Priest and Black Sabbath from the same area. We had Def Leppard. What's wrong yeah, Def Leppard. No, no, hang on. You've got fucking Def Leppard. I don't have Def Leppard. <laughs> I didn't. And, and do you know the only reason that you've got Def Leppard? Because Uncle Vlad said no more airstrikes, we're using too many bombs. That's why. Fucking all that stupid... What's that stupid song they got about sugar? Pour some sugar on me. Excellent stripper song. 
Fuck, I pour some sugar on me, let death let me. Okay, so we we take it you don't like Def Leppard. I mean, no, when what, I... he, what, what he likes is raw rock music, not overproduced music. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a case of I'd like to have some people who know what the fuck they're doing. Although I'll give their drummer credit, he still can play with one arm. Yeah. So I'll give him credit, but the rest of it, not so much. It's the same as fucking Dokken. You know Dokken? You probably never heard of him, have you? No. No. The guitarist George Lynch is a technical master of, of guitar. Love George Lynch, don't like Dokken. You get George Lynch by himself doing stuff and you listen to him. Holy shit. As I say, he's a technical master. So there's all sorts of stuff out there. But, yeah, this this picture is from the Defenders of the Faith era of 1984. I got that in 1984. That poster... I've had it since 1984. How's that for you? It looks like it looks like there's a kid on the front, doesn't it? That, it's that, such an early picture of Judas Priest. That my God. Yeah. Well, my yeah. dad were when I when I um, advertised last week that we're having you on. My dad were convinced it were he were the same guy, Judas Priest man. So uh, and no matter what you said or anything, he he that's my dad anyway. He's just uh, yeah. <laughs> you want to know what's funny? I, I actually caught up with Judas Priest in a hotel in Perth after their concert in 2008. And I was talking to that Rob Halford. I said, hey, you want to see something really funny? He goes, yeah, sure. What's that? So I pulled out my bank card and I showed him. And he goes, oh, well, we've got the same name. How bizarre. So he hops into this lift. We'd have been having a conversation and stuff, and he was just going, he hops into this lift and the door's shut and all of a sudden this fucking hand comes out and the doors stop and he opens the doors and he points at me and he goes, don't you go commit any bank fraud now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> He's a funny guy. He went off and did some shopping and he comes back and he holds something up at me. You can only see one of my hands. So he holds something up at me like this from a distance. It was a bumper sticker and I couldn't see it. So I said to him, I can't see what it says. It says, don't swim with the sharks. It was like a warning sign. He says, you can only ever buy one of these in Australia, and that's why he bought the fucking thing. <laughs> and then I was walking down the street. I, I, was, going, I was going back to uh, where I was living at the time, and I was walking down the street, and I could see this guy coming towards me. It was Ken Downing, known as KK Downing, which is this guy. Boom. This guy here. Mm -hmm. One of the original members and a, and the, the lead guitarist and um well actually that uh let's see it's, it's not easy to do this in reverse so uh, i've got to go uh, uh, that's that's that hand see this guy that's glenn tipton he's a lead guitarist too mm -hmm. but he's a, he's a founding member and he, he's coming towards me and he recognized me and had this big grin and he said thanks a lot dude and he slapped me on the shoulder and i'm like yeah thanks man and off i went only to go home to find out that the house had been raided by the WA police. And supposedly nothing to do with me, but that's a whole other story. Mm. So. Wow. So, yeah. uh, anyway, let's just say hello to some of the people in the chat room, and you can view your chat room if you're uh, Rob Alford or Aid Hardy. Um, <laughs> one of the things in the top corner, it'll say com comments, and just click on that, and you'll be able to see all the comments. It doesn't come up. Um, yeah automatically but we've got alice alicat george in the chat room she sent me a parcel this weekend i got it Saturday. thank you very much for that and um, not um, meant to I, mention those sorts of things on air smuggling drugs is not legal man you need to keep that well, to <laughs> <laughs> people do me a favor and this is what you do Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> uh, super leads is in as well webby is in midnight gardener <laughs> and ron malcolm uh, keith m1 and um, he must live on the m1 so uh, yeah, a lot of good people. Uh, Web Webster, Web. I'm yeah, sorry, Webby. You, I just said Webby's in chat room dinner. Yeah. Uh, good evening to you, Webby. I hope you're all right, mate. And um, uh, well, I, I just hope everything at work's going okay. I'll just say simply say that. So Rob, um, what did you want to talk about last week that we didn't quite get to? I know it ran in Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, can I, the whole situation. Can I just just before we go there, just. A quick 20, 30 seconds, Rob, on the fires. Getting worse, getting better. Any other thoughts? The weather has changed and it's 
we've had a few storms come through and see people get the wrong idea about storms they think oh the storm comes through and it rains and it puts the fires out that happens but guess what usually comes with the storms lightning mm -hmm. and that starts can, it can start more fires but also when the storm comes you get huge winds so before it starts to rain you get the huge winds you know what that does with the fire with but Peter. in new south wales apparently the big storm put 38 fires out so um it's it's cool here at the moment but february march is the peak of the fire season we're not there yet yeah yeah so you know and and they're fucking with the numbers like i said last week with how many animals have died apparently more animals have died than we've got on the continent but don't worry about <laughs> yeah that. that'll be that's not an insurance claim waiting to happen is it anyway uh yeah so we were going to talk about iran iraq middle east all yeah. that kind of stuff so because the um, whole thing is very frustrating you see people on 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 the book of faces and it's it's like what are you people fucking talking about I would have said that half these people were dead shits, but they must have had a brain transplant to become that good. You look at some of the comments that, and, and you're like, what? If you believe them, Iranians are dumb. You know that plane that got shot down? And, and I want to dedicate this show to the people who were on that plane. So this, for my part, I'm dedicating this to the all of the people who were on the plane that they shot down that died. A lot of those were fucking physicists and nuclear scientists and astronomers and all that sort of thing. And they say, oh, they were Canadians. And, of course, you can tell who's who when they go, ah, oh, they weren't Iranians, they were Canadians. They're thinking they're white Canadians. They're Iranians with Canadian citizenship. And they were scientists. A lot of those people were scientists. So, you know, it's just it's insane that people get all these funny preconceived ideas from their own stupidity and of course, you, then you got Fox News and, and people like that, the, the talk and head brigade feeding the stupidity. Um, and they wouldn't even have a clue what, they, what they're on about. So you've got to, you, like, let's take the United States, for example. They declared independence from their overlords in 1776. Well, Iran had already existed for fucking five millennia, but it was called Persia. Five millennia, and you rolled up in 1776. Who the fuck are you people? And, you know, they've been at war. The United States has been at war since 1776, with the exception of less than 20 years. Anytime Iran has been at war, Guess what? They were attacked. So I find it uh, quite interesting that people got all these stupid ideas. Now, for it on the record, I don't have any time for the Islamic government. I don't, I don't believe in theocracies to start with. Even if that was my religion, I'd still, no, no, it's not healthy. It's got to be secular. So I don't believe in all that stuff. And as far as General uh, Suleimani, apparently, you know, he's not the best guy going ever. He's helped to repress the Iranian people and keep the Islamic regime in place. But on the same token, he's also been up in Syria and Iraq fighting Daesh or ISIS or whatever you want to call those scum. And he was working with the Iraqis and the Americans. So, again, it's, it's another situation like Saddam. But what I thought I'd do is start off and, and give some people some, some idea what's going on here, who, who are we dealing with. So, to start with, I thought what we'd do is we'd talk about, well, that's interesting. All the chat just dropped out on me. I don't have any chat anymore, so you don't worry about it. I can't see it. Probably all nuggetry anyway. But anyway, so uh, Iran, and did you, did you notice that, American listeners? Iran, not Iran. That's a fucking song from a flock of seagulls in 1981. So don't worry about that. Um, Iran is an ancient country. Now, when uh, 
Trumpel Stiltskin said, we're going to attack their cultural sites. Don't, don't worry about it, it's a war crime. One of the cultural sites we assume he'll attack is the ruins of Persepolis. That was the ancient capital near Shiraz. Now, if we look that up, let's let's just uh, have a look at this. Let's have a look at Persepolis. You can share your screen with us if you want, you know. Yeah? Why would yeah. I do that? Well, there's a, there should be a thing at the bottom that says share screen. No, no I didn't say how, you know. I said, why would I do that? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were going to show us something. You were looking at something. No, no, I'm just, I'm just looking at something. Uh, do you know, it's, it's not very nice to call your host a nugget. Yeah. You, I was trying to be nice to you. I was trying to like, like you know, you could uh, share. Anyway, go on, you All carry right. on. So anyway, Persepolis, the earliest remains of Persepolis date back to 515 BC. And... You know, the most famous thing you see when you see the ruins is the gate of all nations. Now, a lot of people have seen uh, that show, the 300, with the Spartans and the Athenians and all the others up in the pass at Thermopylae. Now, the Persians were an empire at the same, start, at the same time as Greece was city-states. They hadn't united yet. And in actual fact, one of the reasons they united from a city-state to a nation-state was they found that the city-states could not repel Persia alone. So, with you know, Thermopylae was 480 BC. How's that for you? So here we are in 2020 talking about things that happened, you know, two and a half millennia ago. And Persian Empire was old then. And funny enough, if you guys want a, uh, a bit of a history lesson on uh, Alexander the Great and everything, Iron Maiden did a 13-minute song called Alexander the Great on their 1986 album, Somewhere in Time. It's the last track on the album. So go to YouTube, type in Alexander the Great, Iron Maiden, um, and then... Have a listen to the song. That's all historically accurate. You know, Bruce Dickinson's well known for uh, for being uh, he's a, he's an historian and an author. So this country is old. It was originally known as Persia, but Iran. Do you know what Iran means? It means that somebody ran. No, you are English. You're not American. You don't be like that. Because I get fist. And bash. Actually, does that does that work? Iran. Who's the other one? What does Iraq, <laughs> Rob? What does Iraq mean again? Well, that's helpful. He's asking me a question, so he drops out. Say it again. No. What does Iraq mean? Al Iraq is the the name of the country. Actually, at the moment, it's called Jumaharia Al Iraq, the Republic of Iraq. No, I know that. But you said, do we know what Iran means? Yeah, so you asked me what Iraq means and changed the topic like a very good host. No, 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 I'm not changing the topic. I'm looking for a clue. Oh, you haven't got a clue. I was wondering about that. How come you haven't got a clue? Because <laughs> I'm not sat there Googling all the answers. <laughs> oh. Why not? So come on then, what Iran? Carry on, go. So Iran refers to a, an ancient word referring to the Iranian people in that area, which in Sanskrit is Aryan, which obviously everyone's heard that and it's got bad connotations for people. Aryan is, is a very simple word from the Sanskrit that just means pure or noble. See? Hmm. Now, next door, fucking hell, who let the dogs out? <laughs> fucking cats at window again, like a no bed. See? Going like that, cats stand, sits at window going like that. Yeah, that's what cats do. Exactly, yeah. that's what I mean. So the thing is, the, uh, what do you call it? The Iranians 
their word predates the Sanskrit word. The Sanskrit word means pure and noble. Now, next, uh, you've got a lot of countries around them with the suffix star, which is an ancient Persian suffix. Like, say, for example, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Star just means the land of. That's all it means. Yeah, like England, and Scotland, Ireland. Not quite. Wales land. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good. So the thing is that the um, the star land of, one of them next door, obviously in the UK, you don't go around calling people Paki. But that's what you've got next door, Pakistan. And, and Paki is the Urdu word meaning pure and noble. So these are ancient areas. That's probably why you're not allowed to call it anybody. No, it's because people have managed to turn something into an insult. Mm. So. And I've never considered it an insult. No, some of the people on the receiving end have because of the way it's said. Mm. But anyway, so. Iran is an ancient land, and it's also the origin of the oldest of the monotheistic religions, which is not Judaism. It's Zoroastrianism. Most people haven't heard of it, but uh, do you remember 2001 A Space Odyssey? You remember the theme? Mm -hmm. Also, Sprach Zarathustra. Well, Zarathustra is an alternative way of saying Zoroaster. So that re actually refers to the prophet of Zoroastrianism. And Zoroastrianism was very big in the region. And funny enough, in the New Testament, when they talk about the three wise men came from the east to see this guy called Jesus, it doesn't actually say three wise men. It says three magi. And magi are Zoroastrian priests. So... Not that that means too much, but there's all sorts of little funny references all around the place. So Iran, as I say, it used to be called Persia, and now it's back to being Iran. It has been that before. And the Iranian people are actually cousins to the Europeans. They've got the same origins. And so people look at them and go, oh, look at these Middle Eastern people. They don't realize that that's, those are your cousins. If you're a European, they're your cousins. You know? So it's, it's, it's insane that people have got all these funny ideas. Now, I'm looking at the article on Iraq, and they're saying that the name, there are several suggested origins for the name, and one of it dates back to the Sumerian city of Uruk. Now, that's another situation. Sumeria. Iraq is where Sumeria was. If you go and have a look in, under Sumeria in the, in the Wikipedia article, you'll find a list of all of the technology the Sumerians had that no one else had before, things like agriculture. They were the first people in the world to cultivate crops. Hence the term, the Fertile Crescent, the Tigris and the Euphrates going up towards Syria. And so these are ancient areas. If you go look in the Old Testament, you've got this guy called Abraham. He comes from Ur. You can go there. And the Americans, um, after they invaded Iraq in, in the Second Gulf War, some of them, and I was reading, it's quite interesting. They, they saw these ruins. They didn't know where they were. So they went and had a look, and there was a big ziggurat. It was Ur. They were there. Babylon. Everyone's heard of Babylon. It's 25 kilometers from Baghdad. So it's a case of uh, we're not talking about nations that just occurred in the past few hundred years. And the people like, in my like area. <laughs> yeah, or, well, that one's relatively new. But see, we'll get to those sorts of things because those are all manipulations as well. But the people in those areas are not stupid people. And they're also not some homogenous group. People think, oh, Iranians are all, you know, just one group. There's all sorts of different people in those areas. 
It's not just one group. Like, there's 14 ethnic groups in Iraq. I'm not sure how many there are in Iran. You know, and yesterday I reshared a video that I liked of a young woman dancing on the footpath in the north of Iran, and she was a Persian. She's Azeri from Azerbaijan, an ethnic Azeri. So there's all sorts of people in Iran, you know, um, and so you've got this, this situation where you've got people in countries that are a couple of hundred years old at most pointing the finger at places that have existed for millennia yeah. with people who are educated. I mean, the Mongols took Baghdad in the 1300s, 1200s, 1300s. Being the Mongols, they destroyed all of the libraries. The Tigris was known to run black from the ink of all the books they threw in there. And Baghdad, and it was an actual caliphate there because they had a caliphate, Baghdad was a center of learning for the whole, all of Europe and, and Asia in the 1200s, you know. And Iran and Iraq, their predecessors were already civilized and had nation states when we were living in tribes and villages we hadn't even got to cities but they're dumb and we're smart and i just find it quite confusing how people get all these preconceived ideas so well, we, we, it's not hard though is it rob i mean the media give all these preconceived ideas sure. And a lot of people are open and susceptible to those ideas because yep. there are, there are a lot of them, particularly in places where the the, the um, attacks are going to come from, such as the United Kingdom and America, mm. um, most people, particularly now, are, are all, oh, get them, get them, go do they, they're not They're not really interested in, in anything, you know, that it, they, don't, they don't care that they're the same, they have the same... They have the same worries about the children, and they want to do the same as they do. In fact, they probably probably want to do it better. But yeah, sorry, go on. No, no, it's true, and and it's almost like watching the crowd at the wrestling, you know. And yeah. it's just, and one of the most famous of the people from the area, or with origins from the area, the language in Iran. It depends on who you speak to. They'll tell you it's either Farsi or Parsi. And the Parsis are a group of people that ended up in India and Pakistan who are of Zoroastrian faith. And do you know who one of the most famous Parsis in the whole world is? A guy who was born in Zanzibar by the name of Farooq Bulsara. You heard of him? Freddie Mercury. There it is. Freddie Mercury was a Parsi. And he often said that he had Persian roots. And people, oh, yeah, but he's okay, we like him. Well, what's the fucking difference between him and the rest? I've spent a lot of time around Middle Eastern people, as you know, and other than some little short shit called Sam that I had to try and punch out one day, all the Iranians I ever met were good. Had him by the tile. But Mahmoud stopped me. So there you go. That's a whole other story. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, the whole thing is, is a manipulation. And the media... Are in bed with the owners but you know if we fast forward to world war one a lot of the area was under the ottoman empire up to the borders of persia and persia was neutral yeah. what happens they got oil so the uk and russia simultaneously invade persia and then start using it as a resource to fight the Ottomans. They caused a famine because they're taking the food. They're taking the oil. And then once they left, they left their proxies behind, i.e. oil companies. And um, then during the 1920s and into the 30s, the oil companies were ripping Iran off like you wouldn't believe. So apparently Iran would get about 10 cents in the dollar for the oil. And the Iranian government had tried to do things with it and no, they couldn't get anything out of it. So World War II pops up. Persia declares neutrality again. 
What happens? UK and the USSR invade again. Because this time, they're shipping aid to the USSR through Iran. So it's coming in through the ports and up to the Caspian Sea and into the USSR. Again, take the food, take the oil, take everything else. So after the war's over, we're back to the same deal again. Now, the, the oil company changed its name. Now it's called BP. Some people think it's called British Petroleum. I don't, I'm not convinced BP means British Petroleum. You know what I think it means? Bloody palms. That's what it means. Jason's cousin's one of them. <laughs> yeah. See? But anyway, in all seriousness, so you get into the 1950s, and again, the Iranians are trying to get their fair share of the oil. I mean, they're sucking it out of their ground. So they elect this guy called Mossadegh. He's going, yeah, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, we're going to do a bit of this. They didn't do anything. Britain, France, and the CIA, they helped to topple him and increase the power of the Pahlavi family, who was the Shah. And, of course, over a period of time from the 50s to the late 70s, the Shah's power increased to the point where his secret police was well known as being very oppressive. And the people wanted a change and all sorts of stuff. So guess what the solution was? El Ada brought their man from Paris, who's in exile, and they brought him and arranged for him to go to Iraq. And of course, we're talking about the Ayatollah of rock and roller. And he rolls up and he installs an Islamic regime. And people go, oh, that's, that's the Americans' enemies. No, it's not. He was the CIA's man. That's who put him in. So what's one of the first things he does? Sees all of the hostages in Tehran. And Americans never forgot that. Don't worry about all the shit that the Anglo-Saxon Empire has done to them before 1979, 1980. Don't worry about that. So it's a case of uh, they end up with this wacko in power and the stuff that they've done in Iran to the Iranian people is, is absolutely crazy. And recently they've had an attempt, I don't know if you could call it a revolution or what you could, but lots of people were in the streets. They had an attempt to throw off the, the um, Islamic regime. Lots of people were shot dead in the streets and people put in jail, all sorts of stuff. And then it's, it's happened again with the shooting down of the plane. So a lot of the trouble in Iran is foreign agitators. You know, and everyone's going, oh, you know, these Iranians, they're scumbags. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they shot this plane down. They forget that the, the U.S. Navy shot one down in 1988. The civilian airliner flying over the Gulf, they shot one down. And they even, they even gave awards to the crew. So I don't know. But, you know, it's a case of uh, the whole thing is manipulations as far as the media and the government goes. I mean, the U.S. Secretary of State is the ex-director of the CIA. I'm really going to listen to what he's got to say, aren't I? <laughs> you know? So next door in Iraq, again, they were part of the Ottoman Empire in World War I. So you guys would probably know about Lawrence of Arabia. and Oh, Larry. Hey? We call him Larry in our house. Yeah. Larry the Arab. Oh, Larry. I wonder if that's the guy. Because I keep people hearing uh, others, like they say, oh, he's as happy as Larry. Maybe that's who fucking Larry is. Well, that answers that question. I've been looking to find out who Larry is all these years. So anyway, old Lawrence is sent from Egypt to down to the Hejaz, which is the western coast of Saudi Arabia, to talk to the Arabs and basically do a deal with them. And the deal... And, if you guys haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia, the film with, you know, um, Peter O'Toole and, and uh, Alec Guinness and all these guys, I'd have a look. It's a 1963 film, one of the best movies ever made. So he goes down there and he's dealing with the Arabs and he's told to promise them that if they help to topple the Ottoman Empire, all of the lands there will be theirs. 
So in the film, you actually see Alec Guinness playing the Sharif of the Hejaz, and he says to him, what about the Sykes-Picot agreement? Which is between Britain and France, with Sykes being the Englishman. They'd, they'd the already Britain. carved it up, hadn't they? Yeah, they'd made the arrangement in 1916. And Lawrence didn't know about it. In, in It's genuine. He didn't know. And he said to him, what are you talking about? So it's a case of, oh, you know, we know about it. And he doesn't. He, I don't understand. So they explain it to him. He goes, I don't know anything about it. So he goes back to Egypt and he's told, you just, you're sent out there to do what you're told. You know, you're sent there to do what you're told, not to do what you want. Go back and do the deal. So they did the deal. And the Arabs did quite a bit to help topple the Ottomans, basically tying down Ottoman troops. But they did take the coastal port of Aqaba, which today is in Jordan. If you have a look at the, at the Gulf of Aqaba, it's right up the head. And um, they took that from the Ottomans and they tied a lot of troops down. So the war ends and Britain and France do exactly what they said they were going to do. They split the whole area up and they get the regions that they've decided. So if you go to Syria and Lebanon, for example, you can speak French to a lot of the people because it was the French area. And, you know, with Israel... And Palestine, funny little fact, the Magna Carta is in force in both of those because of, because of the, um, what do they call it again? The, what was that bloody thing that the palace, the, oh, look, he's, see, he's gone again. Unbelievable. It's hard to get good help. J J Jason's uh, internet keeps dropping out. Unbelievable. And, the, uh, um, he'll be Jordan, back. Yeah the the uh, Jordan Palestine deal that the British had, so they had their own areas. So you get to about nineteen twenty, and they try and install what we would call a Saudi as the king of Iraq, and the Iraqis are like, no, we don't want him. He's not one of us. Why would we want him? But see, they promised him. To be in charge of Palestine, but they'd already they'd already promised that to what became the Israelis. The Jew, oh, look at this! A little scary. With the Balfour Declaration, so they had to find him something else. So they were going to put him in in Iraq. The Iraqis said no. So there's huge uprisings, and that humanitarian and, and well-known world statesman of peace, Winston Churchill, may piss be upon him. He decided that what we would do is we'd fix these Iraqis and bomb them from the air with mustard gas in 1920. How's that for you? So the, um, the Iraqis were put down and they got their king. And, of course, all of these people ended up being pro-German during the war, World War II. They got occupied as well. So if we fast forward, guess guess who one of the people that they got to try and assassinate Mossadegh? Saddam. They install Saddam in Iraq, and of course he's 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 no different than the guy next door. You got the Shah of Iran. He's put it. He he was already there, but it was the British and the French wanted him in, and now you got Saddam in Iraq. So when Saddam attacks Iraq, uh, Iran, and he's using chemical weapons like he did with the sarin that he used on the Kurds at Halabja, guess where he got that from? El Cieda. So you've got two proxies fighting each other. Iran was attacked. It was Iraq that did the attacking. So Iraq has got a minority Sunni government over a majority Shia nation, and they're attacking a Shia government with a majority Shia nation. And it was a very vicious, very costly war for both countries in human casualties, let alone anything else. And the same people behind both regimes. And then they wonder why people from Iraq or Iran are saying, death to America. It's like, ah, 
they're saying, and they're saying death to America, not death to Americans. They're talking about death to the to the actual government. But don't worry about that. So you know, it's it's absolutely insane. And of course, then the Americans decide to dispose with their proxy, so they invade Iraq again, and they remove Saddam. Don't even worry about the legalities of it because we all know it wasn't legit. And they put in a democracy, which I thought, well, that's quite interesting. You people have fucked with the people in the Middle Middle East for a couple of hundred years, and then the form of government that doesn't even work for the people in the West, you go and install that. How did you think that was going to work? So the Iraqis then decide that they're going to actually have a proper democracy. So a couple of weeks ago, they had a vote in the House to get the Americans out. They needed 150 votes to compel the government to require all foreign troops out. They got 170 votes. So they said, yep, we want, we want the uh, Americans to leave. And, of course, we know that the Americans said, no, we're not going to go. You've got to reimburse us for the airfields we built here. So now the Americans are officially occupying Iraq again, contrary to international law. And, and, and they're the bad guys, but we're the good guys. How does that work, Jace? Stop sucking that pen. You'll get a mouthful of fucking ink. Sure I've had worse, a mouthful of worse, I promise you. Yeah, well, we don't want to know about your sexual habits. That's not for the to go out on air. You just leave that alone. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, it, it, it does. When you put it like that, I mean, but what you've got is you've got, you've got a situation where propaganda is so rife everywhere. And we were talking about it last week. I don't know if we we're talking about with you or what, but... You know, this uh, the dancing Israelis thing um, uh, that had been brought up, and it, it, Israelis had been uh, changed to his um, Iranians. And yeah. President Trump retweeted that. He retweeted he that. Of course he did. Now, that's, Trump's a very interesting situation because, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the old 80s wrestling. And I used to watch the WWF back in the day. And Trump was a, a special guest star at a couple of the WrestleManias because they were held at his uh, resorts. One of them was held in one of his casinos in Atlantic City in New Jersey. And the Trump back then, he was quite literate. You could get him on camera. He had some charisma and he could talk. The guy now, he can't even complete a sentence. And, and I wonder... Is this the same Trump? What's going on? You know, what, what the hell happened here? So I don't know what the answer is. But talking about the wrestling, it's quite interesting. Back in the 80s, you had this guy, and his name is Hossein Koshrao Ali Vaziri. You heard of him? No. No. In the West, he's known as the Iron Sheik. He's the only Iranian world champion in the WWF. Then you got, he's, he, he teamed up with a guy called Yosef Perozovic, known as Nikolai Volkov. And they would come out with their flags and fucking Nikolai Volkov would get up there and he'd sing the Soviet national anthem, which apparently he hated doing because he wasn't Russian. He was Croatian. And then the Iron Sheik had grabbed the microphone. I used to fucking love this. It was brilliant. He'd get the microphone and he'd say, Russia, number one. Iran, number one. USA, ah, puh. And everything that was bolted down would fly into the ring. Drink containers, wrappers, fucking everything would fly into the ring. And in the wrestling business, they call that generating heat. Well, the Iron Sheik could generate more heat than Fukushima and Chernobyl combined. All he had to do was show the Iranian flag and that was it. Now, when he'd go out... You know what board shorts are, don't you? Yeah, of course. Right. He'd have wrestling shorts that look like board shorts with traditional Persian patterns on them, and his wrestling boots would have the tip curled up like from Persian culture. And often he would 
show Persian culture through the wrestling, one of the things is the Persian clubs exercise where you've got these clubs behind your head like this. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's, it's a test of strength and agility. So there was a bit of that going out. And, yeah, it, it, it was funny. It was absolutely hilarious when, you know, he'd get up there and he'd say that everything not bolted down would just fly to the ring. And everyone would be going, boo. <laughs> it's like, and in the meantime, the guy had got an American citizenship and he, he thinks the world are living in America, you know? Yeah, it's a, like it's a, it's an act wrestling for God's sake. Yeah, um, it's it's all an act. Like like life is all an act, and that's yeah. all he was doing. He was being he was running this part of the act. Well, if if you if you went to a war and could walk out on the battlefield and went whoa 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 hang on guys, just so that I'm clear, who are the bad guys? Yeah, and, uh, they'd each go. Well, they're the bad guys. No, they're the bad guys, and it just yeah. shows you that. They've got more in common with each other than the stupid politicians that sent them there. Yeah. Because all yeah. they've got to... They're, they're, the only information they've got is the propaganda that their own government, whose interest mm. it is to send them there in the first place, have told them. Yeah. And what's amusing is that... I think it was about 1988... A car got pulled over on a turnpike in New Jersey or Pennsylvania, one of the two. And um, this, the, the, the cops did a search on people and, and it just happens that one of the guys in the car was the Iron Sheik and the other guy was the, the guy he was always fighting with in the ring who was USA, USA, USA. And they're in the car travelling together. You know what happened? It blew the whole scam that these guys are enemies because it got into the media because the sheep was caught in possession of cocaine and he had, I think he was also drunk and the other guy was drunk and they're traveling in the car together. And you got this uh, other guy, James Janos, he's known in, in the media as Jesse the Body Ventura. Mm. And he's, he's a very interesting character. I, lo I like Jesse Ventura. and. He's done a lot of interviews with Judge Andrew Napolitano and, ironically, on Fox News, or Fox Business, actually, Fox Business Channel. So in one, Andrew Napolitano says to him, you're not really big on political parties. And he goes, no. He says, because the, the Democrats and the Republicans, it's just the left and right wing of the big government party. And he said, politics is like wrestling. When the camera's on, it's like, oh, I'm going to get this guy and I'm going to bash him and I'm going to kill him and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. When the camera's off, he says, we're in the dressing room. We all shower in the same place. We go out to dinner. They do uh, business. It's, he says, it's all a show, you know? So, Yeah. More rabbit than Sainsbury's, according to um, Sarah Smith in the chat. Yeah, um, it's interesting. A lot of people are complaining that I'm talking. What did you expect was going to happen when I'm a guest on the show? You think I'm going to come <laughs> here and sit and look at A, but if you can do better, come on and do it yourself. No, it's I completely... Easy. Rob, it's what I love about you... From home. It's easy what to I love about you home. is... What I love about you is you're impossible to control, and that's what I love about you, because... We yeah. can ask you a question and you'll just go, Pew! and I love yeah. it. Yeah, but it's interesting. People go, oh, this guy can talk. It's a fucking chat show. What did you want <laughs> to do? Teach you to play chess? I know, I was reading and thinking, uh, but why do people need me to ask Rob a question when I don't even know what questions I need to ask? Yeah. Because I'm not as knowledgeable as he is on this subject. So yeah. why I, 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 I couldn't, if I wanted to, stop and ask you a, a relevant question. So yeah. crack on, brother. So I, I'm actually quite interested. People think, well, you know, it's this and this and this. I didn't come on here to, to pick my nose or teach you guys how to play chess or anything like that. Go by some of the comments, try to teach them to play chess. 
would be about as useful as teaching politics to Americans. I don't, I don't know. I think it'd be very <laughs> successful. But hey, you know, if if people can do better, you come on next week. So I don't think it's a criticism, mate. Honestly, listen, don't take it so seriously. It's, no, it's only no, more early in the morning for you, but uh, you've not been to bed. So. I, I don't. I don't care. I'm not upset. I just find it amusing that people go, "Oh, look, he can talk." It's a fucking talk show. Rob, I want to ask you a question, and it's not about Iran or Iraq. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to call airstrikes on them, in on people because Uncle Vlad said we're using too much ordnance and it's costing a shitload. So if yeah. it's about that, we can't. No, I'm trying to find the comment. Um, <laughs> it was uh, Mark, Shield Destroyer. When, when you mentioned Churchill, who ironically is the only um, British Prime Minister with two photos on the wall. In number 10, apparently, because when you've been prime minister and you've gone, they stick the mm. vote one wall. But of course, Winston's got his up twice, hasn't he? So, um, when you uh, mention Winston Churchill, you say, may piss be upon him. And I get oh, that. definitely. Then, uh, Shield Destroyer said he was a, I think, was it a, a Zion, Zionist? I, I was trying to find the comment. It was Mark, anyway, uh, that he put. And But you were talking, so I just let you go. But that's what I'm. What I want to bring you back to, please explain to people why this guy who's on is it? I did see that comment, and I don't, I don't know which one of our notes he's on, but he's on one of he them. He said Churchill was a pig Zion racist prick. That's it. Yep, a hundred percent accurate. And see, people have to understand what words mean. And you can say that Hitler was a Zionist, and people get all nugget about it, but it's true because a Zionist is someone who believes that the there should be a nation state for the Jews. So technically, that's the situation. And it's proven Churchill was a Zionist. As far as a pig goes, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to address that bit because all the police officers in the world will sue me for trying to associate them to Churchill. And as far as racist goes, everybody knows. Well, I'll take that back. People who study these things know his attitudes. He, he was a, a not just a racist, but a particular type of supremacist. He could say he was a nasty individual, but that, that's on his best possible day. And, of course, seriously good at the propaganda because he managed to be prime minister, get voted for and in and out of office. And Yeah. You know, and, and he gets all this credit for things that he didn't do. And it's just, it's, it's crazy. I think... I think that he's actually the source of the quote that an iron curtain has descended across Europe from after World War II talking about the communists. I think he's oh, actually yeah, yeah. the source yeah. of that quote. So he was good at coming out with quotes, um, but not not good for much else other than feathering his own nest. And this is the thing. I, I get it all the time on Facebook. People go, oh, you must be a Labour supporter, a Liberal Party supporter, or a Democrat, or this. I don't, I'm apolitical, you know? Jesse Ventura, one of the things he said is politics is the entertainment division of the New World Order. And it doesn't, see, like, if you're in, in the UK or if you're in Australia, it doesn't matter who you vote for and who gets into power. You're voting for the monarchy. That's who you're voting for. And people go, No. Okay, so let's say Jason has a brain fart and he decides he's going to stand for politics and he gets elected. Before he can take his seat, he's got to take an oath. Who's he take the oath to? The Queen. And not fucking Farouk Bulsara. That would be a different story. It might be okay, but he's got to take an oath to the Queen. All of them do. So it doesn't it, matter. It, 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 to the Crown or the Queen, Rob? Well, it's to the crown, but they mentioned the queen. Oh, I'll, right. okay. I'll, I'll tell you the oath um, from the Australian Constitution, and it mentions them. You know, uh, let's have a look. There's a question for you on screen from Sarah Smith. I want to know, was Hitler really evil, or was he the one defending himself from you know what? Well, if we go and have a look at the movie, 
Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. There's a scene in the theatre where Palpatine, Darth Sidious, which, whichever name you want to give him, is talking to Anakin Skywalker. And he says to Anakin, the Jedi and the Sith are identical in almost every way. And Anakin says to him, but the Jedi only use their forces for good. And Palpatine says, but good is a point of view. And it is. Good and evil are points of view. So you can say, oh, is this guy good or is he bad? That's a point of view. And people get all nugget when I tell them that. So I'll give you a demo, right? So this guy, Aid, is an SS guard. And this guy, Jason, is a Jewish prisoner. This guy is told he has to shoot this guy. So he does it. Now, if we ask this guy... He'll say it was a good deed because he's a, a Jew and he's a scumbag and I killed him. And this guy will say it's a bad thing because he's Jewish and he just got shot dead. But it's one event. It can't be good and bad, can it? It can't be both. No. So good and evil, as Darth Sidious said, are points of view. So was Hitler a good guy or a bad guy? That's for you to decide. It's not for me to tell you. He did good things. He did bad things. It's, it's not rocket science, you know, and a lot of people think it's it's the Jews, it's the Jews. There's no such thing as the Jews. If you've got any experience of dealing with Jewish people, you'll find that there's an old Jewish proverb, two Jews equals three opinions. And as, as I joke with a lot of people, the only thing you could get every Jewish individual on the planet to agree to is that all the Jews will never agree to anything. That's the only thing. They are notorious for debating and arguing over things. So any idea that there's something called the Jews is fake. And the reason this even exists is because back in the medieval period, the Jews were useful as front men. They are the original front men. Why? Because in that period, the Catholic Church was the only Christianity that was in Europe. There was no Protestant until, you know, the 1500s. So the Catholic Church, looking at the Old Testament, where it says you can't lend money at interest to other Jews, they thought, well, that must apply to Christians. Usury. So, usury, right? So if this can't apply, what are we going to do? Because the Catholic Church is fucking loaded back then as it is now. So they used front men. The Jews were barred from having professions. They weren't allowed to have professions in a lot of the European countries. So they, they forced them into banking. So it's basically like, okay, Jason, you're going to be a banker. Well, I don't want to be a banker. Oh, that wasn't an option. You're the banker now. And, and guess whose money you're lending? The Eight. church. No. So, well, not less. Hey, hey, are you the Catholic church now? Okay, well, we'll lend them AIDS money. So the Jews were actually front men for those with the wealth, which was the Catholic church mainly, and a lot of the nobility so that they could actually lend money at interest to their own people using front men. That's how the Jews got into banking, and it was not by their choice. So people can point the finger at the, oh, the Jews did this and the Jews did that. Most of the time they're front men for other people. And people say, oh, they run the New World Order, they run the world government. They don't. They're still front men. And they say, I get asked, who runs the New World Order? I don't know. There's your answer. If you can name someone, it's not them. It's not them. Now but you, but you've got it. You've got it, uh, the the amount of people that are Jewish that that come to prominence, particularly in entertainment and stuff like that. Mm. It's disproportionate to the amount of people in this country. I think I don't know how, what the the um, um, the statistics are, but I would say it's probably less than two percent of people are Jewish. Yet there's so mm. many people in high profile media places 
I mean, you, you just from one person to a next, and then you suddenly discover the Jewish, and then suddenly you, you it gives you that idea of what you know why they found themselves in that position. Um, it's like when we had um, what it who said it. Um, somebody said uh, I think it was an Irish commentator that talked about um, Esther Ranson and uh, not Esther, Esther Ranson, uh, but it, Vanessa Feltz anyway. Um, Oh, oh, Vanessa Feltz and Claudia Winkleman suggested that they got better deals because they were the highest paid BBC people and oh. suggested they got uh, be better pay because they of their Jewish ancestry, you know, oh. um, and got hauled over the coals for that. Um, so, But there are so many people that are Jewish that are in huge positions that have been... I'll, I'll give you a prime example of one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's this guy that I fucking hate from the uh -oh. bottom of my heart. And I hated him before I knew he was Jewish. So you don't start chucking that at me. Right? I hated him anyway. But uh, <laughs> uh -oh. it, it, it's, it, the guy's called uh, Martin Lewis, money-saving expert. Never heard and, of him. Yeah, exactly. He, started a, he, he basically started a website and a forum um, money saving expert, it, 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 it grew exponentially because it was featured on everything, and then he'd be on radio shows and uh, and explaining, you know, the, the latest things uh, that people could get money off and, and what have you. And then you find yeah. out, then he sells his forum, right? This forum, he sells it for 60 million quid. So he sells it for 60 million quid. And you just think to yourself, of this you're just jealous, you bugger. Right, right. Anyway, so I hated him then, and I thought to myself, fucking sixty million quid that cut. I don't know. Anyway, then one year I hear him, and he's talking about Christmas and how to save money at Christmas. And then he says, wait, wait, wait I don't, uh, I don't celebrate Christmas. I'm Jewish. And then I just thought, boom, there you go. And whether it's yeah. real or not, it's still something that's there that's been. It, uh, that, 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 that's made me sceptical of everybody that, that seems to be, you know, that, that is in a high position. But there seems to be a disproportionate amount of people in these positions. Yeah. Well, it's not a secret that the Jews help their own people. That's not a secret. I mean, one of my friends, you can look this guy up if you want to on the... In oh, hello, he's back now. I, I could hear everything. I was just... Um... Getting me bit, bits and bobs around me. Okay, we'll trust you. The, so you can look this guy up if you want. Um, he wrote a book called The 13th Stone, and uh, he used the name R. Lewis. That's his pen name because his name's actually Reginald Lewis de Costa. He's an English Sephardic Jew. And he said to me that when he came to Australia, I can't remember what Jewish organization it was. They were going to lend him a certain amount of money to set himself up in business. And he said the rule is that they'll do that three times. And if, if you go bust three times, that's it. You're on your own. You've got to pay it back. But it's not a secret that Jewish people help each other, which I think mm. is a good thing. Yeah. We all, we all uh, with us, it's all fucking uh, every man for himself. But it's not a secret that the Jews help each other. But, but okay, but if there were, if if in the UK there was a huge amount of Muslims in positions, that there'd be an outcry. The, it, it, the same, the the, the percentages go <laughs> and, and and what you're describing is nepotism. If you, if it's yeah, if, it is yeah. If yeah, so exactly uh, again, is. which is illegal. <laughs> but so it for is. a start. Well, see, I, I don't understand how, why the, this is, that in the Anglo-Saxon world, the nepotism's a bad thing. I don't understand that, because you think about it for a second. If I was rich and I needed someone to do something for me, why would I give the money to a stranger when I could have someone that's close to me, a friend or a relative that I care about? Why wouldn't I give them an opportunity? Why but you, we're not talking about a friend or a relative. You're talking about somebody that just shares the same faith that the, 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 they worship the same 
um, man up upstairs, don't they? That's all they're doing. So we're not really? talking. We're not talking about. Uh, we're talking about nepotism on a religious scale rather than a family okay. scale. But let's let's transfer this to somewhere like India. Do you think that the Anglo-Saxon Empire didn't have nepotism going with its people in India? And I never said Nepino? that. I never said that they didn't. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying I'm that not... you did. I'm just saying. Why? Why are all these things big deals? You know, I, I, I don't. And that's government doing it. I, that I can agree. That should be illegal. Nepotism in government? No. If it's in private business, that they keep asking in the in this chat room. Have I heard of Somerset Balanoff? Never heard of him. If it's a guy, never heard of him. Um, but nepotism in government? Yes. And. The Anglo-Saxon Empire did it in government. That's wrong. If it's people's own personal affairs, I, I don't see a big deal with it. But so, so you th you think that nepotism is not a problem, even if if it stretches so far as uh, away, so that it's um, um, and I'm sure it goes on, uh, it goes on. But uh, I mean, for God's sake, it's just incredible just how many well, it's, it's like how many people else. get. It's like everything else. How far are you going to let it go? If nepotism goes to the point where people who are qualified for something apply for it and don't get it because they're not part of a group, then obviously that's discrimination. I'm, I'm not up for any form of discrimination unless there's a reason for it. If there's a reason for it, that's different. So say, for example, we know that Jason's lost his leg. He's not going to be able to do certain things. So if he applied for a job where that's a problem and they said, no, sorry, Jason, we can't help you. That's different. But if it's that, oh, yeah, but you're English, even though we're tempted to, to allow that, you're English, we can't give you a job. That's not right. So if people lo are losing out because of it, no, that's different. I think that's, that's a, a huge st jump from what I was talking about. To to uh, to you, you seem to rather you seem to be trying to defend nepotism rather than addressing the point uh, as how far nepotism should go. So, so if somebody is going to if you're if you're going to say that nepotism is okay on a religious um, level, you didn't say that. Well, you, you did. You are. You're saying you said nepotism's. Uh, well, then, uh, that you, if you didn't say that, then you completely missed my point because that what that's the point I was making is that nepotism on a religious scale that gets to start to go towards racism because then you get nepotism, which is um, if you'll only employ people of the same race. I mean, we're, we're, how far do well, we go? Well, that's exactly what I just said. If nepotism gets to the point where people are missing out because they're not of a group and they're qualified for it, that's discrimination. I'm not up for that. So that is when it's gone too far. If it's a situation where I start a company, I can tell you right now, if I started a company, I would be getting the people that I care about involved if they're qualified to do it. So, for example, let's just say, I, I, I don't know, I start a bank and I've got five people who are personal friends and or relatives and they know about that sort of thing, I'd get them involved. Why would I go and hire someone? Because you think about the practical side of this for a second. I know, but, you, but I, I can understand that. I completely understand the point that oh, you're making. See, what I'm saying is that you're minimum. taking it from a family to, um, to a, a, an actual religion. So you're being nepotistic or whatever it fucking is. Um, mm. it, based upon religion rather than not your family. I can completely understand your argument for that. Sure. I worked for my dad, my dad's company. I worked for him. You know, he, 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 I was the only one he really trusted. Yeah, yeah but he was also the only one that would ever employ you. Well, that's... <laughs> who, wants, who wants a fucking one-legged fucking uh, <laughs> van driver these days? But, no, but you, you see, so... Uh, I, I completely get, I understand that, right? I understand that. And, uh, you yeah. know, we'd had never advertised the job and so it weren't like me against somebody else. So it's, it's, that's all good. I, I, I believe that. Yeah. <coughs> it's just that when you're starting to um, use that argument as for why there are more people in the media that are Jewish or why 
the people employ people based upon their religion that they're Jewish and mm. therefore they trust them more because they're Jewish. It, it, it just, I think it's just a huge step from the family, that sort of nepotism to to the the nepotism that we, we seem to have got. And I, I believe it goes on in, in, in all industries and in all walks of life and, and everyone. It's just, uh, you know, the Jews, Jewish people have seemed to have got the media um, and all the, all the, 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 which is, let's face it, you run the media, you run the country, don't you? To a degree, sure. Yeah, of course you do. Um, and so it, it, it's, it, for me, the, the disproportionate amount of people in media that are Jewish is a concern and it should be a concern to everybody because they're going to have a, a pro-Israel agenda and whereas in most places they're supposed to be in positions of um, that's an assumption Why it, it's someone... not an assumption though is it you it hear is. them they wouldn't be allowed on they but, wouldn't but, I, I listen, that. listen that guy that I was talking about it was an Irish um, it was an Irish uh, guy who uh, who'd written an article in the newspaper so we were a journalist he'd written an article in the newspaper about Claudia Winkleman and uh, um that other fat bird that I talked about, what's her name? Vanessa oh. Feltz. Vanessa Feltz, right. So, he, and he said, perhaps they got they got the top because they're Jewish. They got the top. All um, oh, right. Okay. Because they're Jewish, and the and then he said, well, because they're Jewish, they're more likely to have been involved in business and know how to negotiate and and stuff like that, right? But it weren't it weren't dealt with like that. And now mm -hmm. I heard him. He went on to. Um, um radio five live and he was interviewed about that now the woman who was interviewing his blonde bird called emma barnett and i never knew this but it, when she was interviewing him he was saying look I, i'm sorry and he was doing all the you all the you know retractions that they do uh, and saying all this and she said you're saying this about jewish people my own religion so they've got a jewish woman Inter interviewing a bloke, an Irish bloke, who's written a, um, a, an article which has been perceived to be anti-Semitic by fucking mm. lunatics in fucking... Uh, uh, well, I don't know what they wear. They, they must wear fucking cardboard hats or something. I, I just don't know what. But it, the, the, it's been deemed to be anti-Semitic. And the BBC, in the infinite wisdom, have got him in for an interview and put Emma Barnett, a Jewish fucking broadcaster... Probably because they didn't have anybody else. They, they, they probably didn't have any, uh, you know, Muslims or, or uh, you know, God forbid, fucking English people, the BBC oh. English people. But, you, you know, it's just, it just perplexes me that, um, that uh, my point again is that I, I understand the point of nepotism and how it can be okay. Um, but when it's, put to a it's taken to a level where it includes um religion then i think that's where there's a problem sure thing is obviously from what you're saying you've got this concept that all of the jews are thinking the same that's not even realistic and so a lot of the jews in the media are not even pro-israeli a lot of them are pro-palestinian do you see Come them on. on the bbc of course you don't see them on the bbc because the BBC is pro-Israel, so the right. BBC so aren't happen. going to aren't going to employ Jewish right. um, people who are pro-Palestinian. Right. I, I, I heard what I'm I not heard saying it's today. all Jewish people. I, you get me mixed up. I'm not saying it's all Jewish people. I'm saying no, no. that th I'm not this, addressing that. I'm addressing what you said before. If Jewish people are in the media, they'll be pro-Israel. That's not the case. The ones that you see in the media are generally pro-Israel because they're the ones that get given the prominence, but they're not all like that. A lot of the Jewish people in the media that you don't see because they're not given prominence are either pro-Palestinian or anti-Israeli. Or anti-Israel, I should say, not anti-Israeli, but they're anti-Israel for whatever reason. And they're out there. You can talk about some of the most famous ones. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name now. He's, he's 
They say that he's a Holocaust denier and both of his parents were in Auschwitz. What's his name again? Finkelstein, Norman Finkelstein. He's, he's oh, not a media guy, but you see him often. And, of course, the others are always making fun of him, whether they're Jewish or they're not. They're making fun of him and having a shot at him, and he's unrepentant. You can go onto YouTube and see all sorts of stuff where he's talking, and, you know, someone comes up and says, oh, you know, my grandparents were in the Holocaust. And he said, don't pull the Holocaust card on me. My parents were in the camps. Don't pull the Holocaust card on me. And... Norman Finkelstein's banned from entering Israel. He's he's very anti-Israel and pro-Palestinian. So it's a case of are they all pro-Israel or are the people that we see all pro-Israel? That's the question. Well, the people that we don't see don't matter anyway. So the people well, that we oh, do well, see, yeah. well, they don't matter anyway because if you don't see them, nobody is the nobody is there. People like us will hear their voice. Because we'll listen to it, we'll look out for it. But generally, normal people, fucking normal people, people, <laughs> zombies, will sit and watch and they'll get all this pro-Israel bollocks, tell off all this crap on the uh, on the media. I think I've run, run off again. Oh, I, hadn't. I thought I'd come, jumped off again. It, it, it'll just see all you this. Did that about half an hour ago. <laughs> I'm not saying that their work doesn't matter. I'm just saying... The, yeah, I understand what you're saying. If they're not in the public way to eye, matter. they because don't matter because they're not they're not seen. At the end of the day, the me the, the media um, is the only way that well, the main way that people get their opinions. This is what you're told to think today. Mm. Um, yep. And so, you know, it, the, the guy, the, all these uh, uh, journalists and that that are uh, either pro-Palestine or anti-Israel or both. Um, they're not going to get a look in because it's not part of the agenda. That's right. not what they want us to see. And you can so, always tell what you're not supposed to uh, talk about. Mm. It's what you're not allowed to talk about or sure. what you never hear spoken on. Right. The thing is, when you're talking about the media, you're talking about the people that I call the lamestream media shalmuta. Because the difference between them and an actual shalmuta is that they sell their souls. They don't rent their body by the hour that's who you're talking about yeah but just be aware that see that hang on i can't to see these guys mm. they're the media you are the media yeah so the thing is it's it's a case of we've got to look at what what do we perceive and what's the reality there's a lot of people and i mean you can go down my friends list i've got a lot of people who are israeli who are not big on the way things are going. They're anti-occupation, they're anti-this. And you see fights on their walls all the time, you know. And I get people try and manoeuvre me into spots at times and they go, oh, do you, do you think Israel's got the right to exist? That's a fucking stupid question to ask me because guess what the answer is? I don't even believe in nation states. Why would Israel be different to any other? They go, what about Denmark or Ireland? Well, they're nation states. I don't believe in nation states. So that includes them, doesn't it? They go, oh, I don't believe in flags or nation states. What the fuck? We formed nation states two millennia ago and you're still stuck on these things. I don't care. So if, if you ask me, does Israel have the right to exist? It's a fictitious legal entity, a nation state. I don't believe in it. And they're like, oh, okay. Because they're trying to trick me into the point they do other people to say, it's Palestine and the Jews should go back to Europe and all of that sort of thing. And I don't believe in that either. So they try to manoeuvre me and then they get the, oh, what do we say now? Because they don't get people tell them that. You know, and every now and then, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, every now and then, I get people come onto my wall either because I've told them to or I've started it and they've come on because they've insisted that I'm, I'm anti-Semitic, which I keep telling people that's a, a meaningless term, but they come onto my wall and I'll say, all right, well, this guy's accused me of being an anti-Semite slash Jew hater. Have you ever seen any of those threads on my wall? No, no. Sorry, no. I, I, I don't have face okay. shit. 
I... Okay. Well, every now and then it happens. And um, I've got a lot of people who know me very, very well. And they come on and they, I don't even have to say anything. And you want to see what happens with, with the Jewish people who know me well when these clowns come on. And it's on for fucking young and old. It's like a cat fight. Because that's not the case. You know, and it's just the there's a lot of things that we focus on where there's no there's no relevance. You know, they've got us focused on all sorts of things. And we focus on these things. Oh, the Conservative Party's bad and the Labour Party's good, but they all work for the same people. What's the fucking difference? Of course they do. Why would you do that? You know, it's the same as, oh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus the Iron Sheik, and they both get arrested driving up the turnpike in the same car. Obviously, they're not that bad enemies, are they? You see what I mean? And so um, it's amusing to see that people get stuck on all of these stupid preconceived ideas of oh, this guy's this and this guy's good. I'm apolitical. I'm not interested in all that shit. Is it a political party? Yeah. Well, it's fucked. Like people here keep saying, oh, we've got to do this. And we've got to do that. And then... They all swear an oath to the Queen. So it says here, this this is the oath. I, A, B, do swear that I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Victoria, her heirs and successors, according to law, so help me God. Now, today they don't use the Queen Victoria part because the Constitution's from 1900. They use the name of the current Queen. So they swear to her. Well... That means everyone works for the Queen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of the Guelphs. Fuck the Guelphs. I'm not, I don't want anyone working for them. Now, even, even if I was sitting in England, I still wouldn't want people working for the Guelphs. They're a, they're a black <laughs> What the hell is that? It's time. What was that? So, yeah. Hmm? What no, was carry on. That? It's all right. Yeah, okay. So I, I don't want anything to do with them. You know, they're a black nobility crime family. Why would I swear an oath to a black nobility crime family? And then, you know, all these people work for them and you expect it to be different, you know? So how, how does that work? It's just insane. So I don't believe in all of this stuff. Me neither. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Absolutely just meaningless tripe. It just exists between people's ears. It's to keep activists occupy, occupied on meaningless <laughs> quests. And if you can control the opposition, you can steer both sides of the same thing. And that's all you know, you know, Lenin said many, many years ago, the best form of opposition is that we control ourselves. Exactly. And you know, it's, it's this isn't rocket science. So when it comes to all of this stuff, I don't believe in nation states and fucking monarchies and all of it's all dumb. Monarchies have existed for how many millennia now? What are you talking about? Aren't you people done with that shit? Have you not done with that shit yet? Oh, we've got nation states. Fuck, that's existed for millennia. Haven't you done with that either? You know, it's a case of if if we are ever going to get past being knuckle dragging violent apes, we've got to we have to move on through our timeline and acquire wisdom. You can't acquire wisdom while having kings and queens and fucking nation states and flags and militaries. That's what they want to keep them on the drip feed and suck our life's blood. Fuck that shit. And the shows about Iran, it's a perfect example. They're, they're using Iran to play the game. Who's paying for it? Whoever's getting involved, mainly the Iranians at the moment. But they're the bad guys. Well, fuck, good bad's a point of view. You know, so I've, I've said things on Facebook and people say Oh, you're an apologist for the mullahs. I'm not even a fucking Muslim. 
Why do I give a shit about a group of Ayatollahs? Now, I think that they have done a good job in Syria. Iran has done a good job in here, Syria, working with the Russians and the Syrians to destroy the West's pets running around, killing people. And I don't understand people in the fucking West supporting the rebels. Every time the rebels moved into somewhere in Syria, they put the women into niqab. So you're gonna, you want to liberate people by putting the women in niqab. Are you people fucking insane? You're functionally insane. They make them like it's Saudi Arabia. Well, gee, I wonder why that is. Maybe because they're Salafists slash Wahhabists. How would you support that? You want to liberate these people by, by putting them under Wahhabists. Huh? Are you on drugs? It, it makes no sense. And it's like this. If there's no up, there can't be down. If there's no light, there can't be dark. If there's no left, there can't be right. He looks better than Jace. So it's, it's basic stuff that you're being played. You can't play chess if there's only white pieces on the board. You've got to have black pieces too. Otherwise, there's no game. Don't worry about who's moving the pieces. Who owns the board? Now, you guys know Santos Bonacci, don't you? No. Yeah. I don't mean know him personally. You know of him. No. Yeah, know of him, yeah. I okay. do. I was having a chat to him. I visited him when I was in Queensland. We're having a, we're having a chat. Well, and, perhaps, uh, perhaps you should tell for people like Aid who don't know who he is, just give us a brief overview of who he is. He talks about astro theology and all sorts of things. He's mainly trying to get people to look beyond the headlines and understand what things actually mean. That's, that's his methodology. So I went and visited him and, and just Google it, Santos, pretty easy, Bonacci, B-O-N-A-C-C-I. -C I'll tell you about a funny chat talk I had to him in a minute, but I went and visited him while we're, I was in Queensland and stayed the night at his place and we had a big chat and met his girlfriend and all that sort of stuff. We ended up paying fucking Frisbee out in the yard because he lived in the bush. So 50-year-old <laughs> guys playing fucking Frisbee. I don't know how that works. Anyway... <laughs> Um, we were talking and I said to him about it's not Jews that run the world, it's Italians. And he's Italian. He says, yeah, of course, the 13 families are all Italians. He named them. Doof, 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 doof. It's not Jews, it's Italians. So they are the main people running the system. And people go, ah, oh, fucking Italians, what are you talking about? Well, who do you think the Catholic Church is? Who do you think the Roman Empire is? The Roman Empire never went away, it changed. That's all it's done. Same as the Anglo-Saxon Empire hasn't gone away. It changed. See you, Nick. Don't hurry back. Bye. <laughs> so it's a case of, um, yeah, he's away now. So anyway, the thing is... It's all right, we can uh, talk about Nick now he's gone. But he's upset because Santos is into things like the flat earth. Santos wanted to talk to me about it. I said, I'm not interested. So he left it. It's not my place to tell you guys what you can talk about. If Santos wants to be into the flat earth, that's his deal. Oh, I've got we've no, got, in fact, I'm, I'm just going to say, no we've, got flat earth. Earth. we've got it's a flat not... earth show. What on tomorrow night? I just want to po point out. Okay. Um, yeah, it's flat earth. Uh, it's me. Um, with my open-mindedness uh, versus Jason Green, he's going to be joining us. He usually talks about terrorism. Tomorrow we'll be talking about flat Earth. You might be surprised who yeah. is uh, batting for the flat Earth. But go on, go on. But Santos believes in it, and I don't. He's he's a friend of mine. What sort of an idiot am I to go and tell him that's this, that's that? You can't be my mate. That's not how it works. That's his opinion. I'm not going around crunching everyone because they've got different opinions to me. That doesn't make any sense. So Nick's all butt hurt because Santos talks about things that he obviously doesn't like. Well, in the real world, adults have to understand other people have got different opinions. That's the way it is. Not my problem. So, you know, it's a case of, uh, so we were having a chat and he named all these families. And he says he's a flat earther, Rob. Who does? Uh, Nick. Nick does. 
Nick says he's a flat earther. Nick's a flat earther. Oh, I'm sure that that's great for him. So what? So that's not the reason he doesn't like Santos. I don't give a fuck why he doesn't. He's my mate, not Nick's. But if he <laughs> wants to be, if he wants to get this clown off, I'm off. We'll go. Bye. Don't hurry back. Shut the door on the way out. It's fucking cold. Don't be a nugget. But I don't understand why this is. Oh, well, you dialed in to listen to the show. I didn't come to your house and knock on your door. Do what you want. It's a free world, supposedly. So the thing is this, that people have got their own, own beliefs. I'm not running around telling people what to believe. If you want to believe it's flat, do it. If you want to believe it's a globe, go for it. I'm not even in the argument because I just don't care. But we were talking about it, and ironically, one of the families of the 13 is the Borgias, and that's who Jesus is depicted from. All of the pictures you see of Jesus is Cesare Borgia. You know, the Pope's son and a cardinal in the church. But, and ironically, Elizabeth, sitting on that throne that you guys have got over there, is of Venetian bloodlines, a Venetian black nobility crime family. And that's your queen. She's not fucking German. They married into German lines, but they're Venetians. And no, you can't hang them in the window because people get upset when you do that. So anyway, we were chatting about that and he went through all these different families. And it's funny, I was looking on uh, Facebook and you guys know that English band Girl School? Yeah. Right. No. See, it's you always got one. Girl School? Yeah. Yeah, it's a heavy metal band from the... Let me give it a big break. He did, yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound like my sort of band, that girl school, for God's sake. What is it? Like a, is it your girl band? Well, uh, basically, it's like a motorhead rock band of that kind of era. Girls. For girls. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. So, okay. Yeah, go on. Oh, right. So, you yeah, like for... wear eight short leather skirts and that? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and But they were pretty good as well. Well, Kelly Johnson, the lead guitarist, Lemmy said that she was better than the majority of male guitarists out there. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons he wanted to promote her. But anyway, at one stage, one of the members of girls' school left and she was replaced by another one called Chris Bonacci. So I, I saw her on Facebook this day and it said Myrtleford, Victoria. And I thought, holy shit, that's where Santos's family home is. I've been to his parents' place. And, you know, we're fucking talking about stuff at his, his mum and dad's house in Myrtleford. I'm thinking, hang on a second. Chris Bonacci, guitarist, Myrtleford, Victoria. Santos is a classically trained guitarist. You want to see him playing flamenco, your, your fucking jaw will drop. He's absolutely brilliant. So I, I messaged him. I said, hey, is this Chris Bonacci? It's his cousin. I didn't even think. It never twigged. Bonacci, Myrtleford, Victoria, Santos. It's his cousin. So I just I just found it amusing that I never tweaked. But anyway, so the the whole thing is all of this nation state flag waving stupidity, that's where we're at right now. We've just had an exchange between the United States and Iran. Is it all a facade? Probably. But people get killed. And who's, who are the people that pay? Us. And who's us? The common man. Right? So an American sitting in fucking Texas right now listening, and they're probably not, but an American sitting right now in Texas, you know, let's say he's sitting in Amarillo. An American sitting in Amarillo, Texas right now has got more in common with an Iranian sitting in Tehran than he does with the people in fucking Washington, D.C., Yep. Or how about this? Some poor bastard sitting in Sheffield in England has got more in common with a guy sitting in Shiraz in Iran than he does with the people in London. So why are we hating on all these other people? Because the fucking media tell you to. And who owns the media? The same people running your governments. Well, that's a good plan. Let's hate the people that our enemies tell us to hate. You see that unlawful head's gone. He got stuck there going. <laughs> it's like, okay, bye. 
So, you know, it's just it's just a case of I, I'm, I don't buy into all of that stuff. I the don't. thing with Iran and Iraq, I mean, I've got to give Trump or Stiltskin some credit here. Donald Trump is doing something that no one else could do. Not only did he manage to unite the Iraqis, he's probably going to unite the Muslims. So the Iraqis are all united. They want, they want the Americans out. Now, you got, remember I said that Iraq is minority Sunni and majority Shia and Iran is majority Shia. Iran and Iraq have got a history of violence against each other because they've been used as proxies. Yeah. So there's a lot of bad blood as far as those wars go. And so you've got a situation where there's this hatred. Then it's now looking like, well, hang on a second. The Americans are all of our enemies. Nobody's successfully united the Shia and the Sunni before. But it looks like Trump or Stiltskin is pushing them to the point where he may unite them. Now, of course, if you if you want to go and read all sorts of things, you can go on the internet and type in Albert Pike, Three World Wars, Letter to Mazzini. And it says in there about how they're going to start this world war, this world war, this world war. So if Trump or Stiltskin actually does unite, force a situation where all the Muslims are united, it's right in line with the Letter to Mazzini from 1871. You know, and it's it's amusing because every now and then I get I get Muslims going off on Facebook, and it's mostly Sunni going off at Shia. They say, "Oh, you're not even real Muslims. You're dogs," and they're going for it. And I get people having a shot at me, and I say, "Oh, okay, are you a Sunni?" And they go, "Yeah." And of course, I, I was I, I'm formally educated in an Islamic college. I wanted to know about Islam and all of its precepts. I've got formal education in it. So I, I understand the deal. So I say to them, oh, okay, was Rasulullah Sunni or Sunni or Shia? And Rasulullah means messenger of God. It refers to Muhammad. And they're going, oh, he's neither. Oh, okay. So he wasn't Sunni or Shia. No. What about the Sahaba? That's his companions. They go, no, they weren't either. Oh. Isn't there a law in the Sharia against innovation? Yeah. So if Rasulullah wasn't Sunni or Shia, and you're a Sunni, isn't that innovation? And they go fucking ballistic. How can you call the Shia dogs if you're Sunni and it's an innovation? There were no Sunni or Shia at the time of Rasulullah and the Sahaba. And Shia is actually from Shia al-Ali, who were the companions of Ali, which is Muhammad's grandson. When Muhammad died, the tradition for the Shia is that he nominated his grandson to be his successor the the people who are the sunni say that's not true but that's where this conflict came from so it's a it's a case of they turn around and they go oh you're dogs and you're this and you're that it's an innovation what are you talking about and this is the thing why are you fighting amongst yourselves over dumb shit? how's that going to help you so over a period of you know uh, let's see, Ali would have died around 700 and something. He was killed in a battle. So since 700, they've diverged and they have different beliefs. So there's things in Shia Islam that don't exist in Sunni and, and vice versa. You know? Well, that's very good, Super Leads. And with a name like Super Leads, I don't even have to answer your question because you're in the fucking first division. Listen, I'm back. I've just noticed that I go off every time I leave this room. So if I go in the kitchen, I come back and it's off. That's every single time I've done that, it, it, it's gone off. So, so why don't you go in the kitchen while we're broadcasting, you nugget? <laughs> yeah, shh. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell the kitchen that you're coming. Right, let's yeah. see if it happens again. If this happens again, honestly... Fucking, I think Derek Akora's fucking about with me. <laughs> yeah. And then he figures out he's rolling the wheelchair over the cables, and that's what the problem is. That's all right. We'll, we'll let him off. Actually, no, that, that wouldn't be the case. No. Yeah? No. Why, well, he's on wireless. No, he's... Um, 
is is uh, cable savvy enough to know, to know not to run over it. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just find all of these divisions to be useful to the people who are fucking us up the ass. Sunni, Shia, Iran, USA, fucking monarchy. What? Well, it's all divisions. How does that help you? How does that help you today? Does it help you pay your bills? No. Does it help you in your life? No, it actually is the other way around because once they play these games out and they come along and they start conscription or the draft, depending on where you're at, they're sending your kids to fight their stupid wars. It doesn't help you at all. It's detrimental to us. Why would you do it? You know, it's it's if it's an addiction, yeah, okay, I understand about addiction. See, there he goes. He's gone off to the kitchen to fire up the chippy and he's <laughs> fucked off again. Fucking unbelievable. Every time he goes to make a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, well, you say it's a cup of tea. I think he's out there firing his chippy up. I heard some hissing. Of course, that could just be the cat seeing him coming. <laughs> so the, the, the whole thing with Iran and Iraq, these neighbours have been at it, but it's not because of the each other. It's because of the proxies. And... What happened to the proxies? They got done away with the people they were working for. Mm. And now the Americans want to do away with the proxies that are in place now. It's And, you know, it's amazing. Why would you even participate in this game? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just got to the stage where, hang on a minute, all, all the stuff that was going around in my head and eventually I just went, well, well, that means that government can't exist. It, it, it's impossible. Um, and it is impossible because all it does, it takes money fr from you when and, and stops a real education. Mm. It, because what, what, what's called an education isn't it? It's just an indoctrination. So everything that you see, be it a, a government, a all these religious wars and all it's just theater that's right. all it is it's exactly. nothing more than that and not a, a good example it, I'm, I'm gonna make a prediction that jason sends me a text to tell me that his internet's gone off yeah that's what i was just thinking too. hang on a minute <laughs> it's gone all together now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like like we don't know that jason nuggets. yeah hang on a minute they know I've rumbled them. <laughs> oh, fuck it. <laughs> so, yeah, so all, all of this stuff is, is a, uh, it's just theatre. Um, is it, I'm going to, I'm going to make a prediction. Well, just don't go to the kitchen for fuck's sake. Cause no, I'm um, stuck here by myself and the internet will drop. You know, we've, at the moment we've got Trump poking around and, nah, 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 going on. And anybody else that he can. Yeah. Yeah. Politically, if you believed in all that, which, you know, God knows how many dumbass Americans do, um, then he, he, he's in his, what, what is it, November, isn't it, there, the election? I'm not sure. So he's, he's just got a few months. Now, politically, if he started, a lot of people voted for him because he'd said, oh, no, we're, we're going to pull our guys out of the Middle East. Yeah, mm. Like, fuck you are. Uh, yeah, um, but that was, you know, that's what he said. Like so that American, that, then American put, said, "There's a sucker born every minute." Yeah, since then he pulled back and said, "Oh well, um, you know, we're, uh, we're, 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 we're we'll 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 leave there for now, you know, and we're just keeping the peace, but yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna fight, and we're not gonna bomb them or anything. Don't worry, you know, we're just." So he's gone from well, we're gonna pull everybody out. That's Jason again, I guess. Yeah, no um, shit. <laughs> and now he must be thinking, hang on a minute, uh, I keep poking this bear in this cage here. Mm. Um, I think he'll wait until his election and then either really ramp it up just before Probably. we get it all into a frenzy. And that's that's what his political campaign will be about. They've done or, that before. Or he'll completely kill it all till just after he's got his second term and then it'll bomb the shit out of them. They've, done, they've used Iran before, if you recall, 
Mm. When Jimmy Carter was up for re-election, he'd negotiated the release of the hostages, but behind the scenes, they did they did a deal with Iran not to allow it before the election, so Jimmy Carter couldn't get the credit. Reagan got the credit for it, but it wasn't him. Yeah. So has has Iran been used for election purposes before? Yes, they have. Yeah. And, and it's very cynical, but that's the way it goes. You notice there's no there's no new chats coming up. I must have successfully killed off the fucking whole chat. Say that again. Sorry, I was I was reading the chat thing. I need to read this other message, don't I? Please? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. There's there's no more there's no chats coming on. I must have successfully killed it off and everyone's left. No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, okay. What's he, what's but then, he doing here? Yeah. So, you know, it's a case of with Trump, it's very, very interesting the way people just believe. And I mean, they got this thing called QAnon. And people go, oh, yeah, well, he's doing this and he's doing that. There's no evidence. It's all faith. It's like a fucking religion. Yeah. What evidence? Oh, well, you know, they've got these secret military tribunals. Can you show me in US law where it allows secret military tribunals to, to actually try civilians other than the Patriot Act? Like, there's no facility for that. You know? Uh-oh. Jason, can I make a suggestion? Don't no. go to the kitchen. And what go did I tell kitchen. you? <laughs> and what did I fucking tell you? And I went over to my machine, and I, I, you've sent you that video, Anna. Yeah. I sent you a video, and I showed you the light was flashing because it was coming on and off and intermittently, and that's what it does while it, it flashes. I'm telling you, every time I leave and go in the fucking kitchen and come back, it goes off. I don't know what the fucking hell that is, whether it's my wheelchair conducting the wireless fucking thing i don't know i don't but the internet went off it weren't just i, I, I don't know what it is it's the pixies and the goblins having a fight <sighs> fucking hell you yeah know what it is? it's the mossad trying to get you off the internet that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> actually i shouldn't tell him that he'll fucking believe it <laughs> i'm not fucking i'm not running over cable by the way sarah i uh, it's, it was um pop in the chat room there's no cable it's wireless it's just that when I leave, when I come back, the internet goes off. Right, shall we try it one more time? I'll tell you no, what it is. I know what it is. I bet, it, I bet where your router is and your wheels that are metal spokes are come between your laptop and the router and it stops the signal getting to your thingy. Yeah, but hang on a minute. That don't make any sense. Why would the internet go off, so? That was the internet that was off. That little flashing light on that video that I sent you, that's the internet trying to come back on. The internet actually went off. Yeah, it means the whole net's cut now, not the connection. Oh, right, okay. like the router and him. Mm. Maybe somebody likes you. Well, I, I'm going to leave room and I'm going to come back again. If it happens again, this is that's definitely definitely scientific because I've, I've done it again. <laughs> oh. I, I'll be back Here's on. The patch. <laughs> right. you, let's just see. Right, go on. I'm then. telling you, this is fucking real. I'm pushing me saying I can't use my hands to do for a call. I'm going off. It is. That's not what I heard, but okay, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's a case of it. it's it's all just a huge game. Why people buy into these things, I don't know. I think people need to believe in a higher power that's going to fix everything for them. Now, whether well, that's a god. Whether yeah. it's the government, whether it's whatever it is, that seems well, go to be government is a religion. Government is exactly a religion. It is. It's got all these things that you can and can't do. You've got to believe in a leader. Mm. You know, it, 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 that's got a, all its disciples. Yep. And uh, and just to keep you interested, you get to vote for a different leader and disciples every few years to think that you've got something, but. But actually, the same system's still there. You know, it's funny. Americans actually truly, honestly believe... I cannot that believe that. He's president. just gone. Yeah. So he'll be back in a couple of days. Americans honestly believe that they elect the president. They don't. Anyone that studies their system will know that the president's appointed by the electoral college. You don't elect your president. Now, funny enough, all of the presidents, except for one relatives of the English king what does that what does that sound like to you that Jason was ranting about earlier 
If mm. all of the presidents, including Trump or Stiltskin, except for one Dutch president in 1820 or whatever it was, are related to the English king, that's a proxy. Who's it a proxy for? Fuck, maybe they're relative, the English king. Gee, that's not difficult, is it? So you think you're electing them, the Electoral College will appoint the president based on the votes that they distribute that come from the people. Yeah, you got two hands, we noticed that. No. That's I, insane. So who do we think it is, Derek Akora? I don't know. But I, it's every time, I, you've, I've just shown you that again, Anna. Yeah, it, yeah. Apparently. Every time I leave the room and the actual internet goes off, the, the internet actually goes off. So it's like trying to reconnect all the time. Mm. It's nothing to do with my Wi Fi signal. The Wi Fi signal is fine. It's the actual internet is going off. And I just don't know. I can't understand it. It's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Where, is your, where, where is your router? It's over there. So it's, it's in the uh, room that you're in? Yeah. It's in the room that I'm in, yeah. Ooh. Somebody's watching you. <laughs> Don't tell him that. It's the Mossad. They're watching you, Jace. Ooh. They're waiting for you to leave the room and they're cutting your internet off. Ooh. Well, Jeff, do you see what I mean? It, 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 come on. It, that is weird, isn't it? It is weird. Oh, every are, are you scared of clowns? Are you scared of clowns? I'll, I'll do it again for you. No. Nope. That's not the weirdest thing. That's the second weirdest thing because the weirdest thing is actually in that picture. <laughs> see? What is it? You see this? This no. is what happens when you don't have the money to purchase a license for your unlawful head. Oh, right. But anyway, yeah. that's okay. And then people say, what about me? I don't need a license. I'm a legend in my own lunchbox, so don't worry about it. He's, he's so this this guy here. He's mostly jealous because of this and this and this and this. See, see what that? That's what he's jealous of. It's not my fault. Well, so, hey. right, we've got um, uh, eight minutes, Rob. What do you want to finish with? Your Iran, Iraq. Middle East, Australia, well, bushfires. I just think that products, all of this, English all of this family. is stupid that people are buying into all of this division. They're hating on people who have got more in common with them than they do with their own so-called leaders. And they're content to sacrifice their own kinsmen. Now, you're talking about the education system. In England, when did the education system first arise? Well, basically, when they closed the workhouses, wasn't it? No. No? During the Industrial Revolution. Right. And do you remember they used to teach people reading, writing, and arithmetic? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because they want you just intelligent enough to operate a machine, but not right. clever enough to work out why. Right. So if you're going to operate a machine, you're going to be able to read the instructions, read what you're meant to be doing, count what you're doing, so that's where your reading, writing, and, and arithmetic comes in. You've got to be able to do that to run the machines. That's the only reason they educated people. Then they figured out, well, listen, we'll teach them what we want them to know. And as you said, it's not education, it's indoctrination. Mm -hmm. So recently, in the past 12 to 24 months, apparently you've had something on TV in the UK about what they call Angorta Moor in Ireland, the Great Hunger, where... The British government starved people on purpose, not a fucking potato famine. And people in England itself were shocked when they saw what had happened because it's not taught in the UK. You know? So it's it's a case they teach you what they want you to know. Yeah. In Australia, there's tons of things that have happened in Australian history. I never got taught in school. You know, they don't talk about the frontier wars. If, if you believe the way they taught us, the British arrived, there was a bit of conflict, 
it was here and there, and that's it. Do you realise that the colony in Botany Bay was almost wiped out by the Aboriginals? They were down to the last 14 days of ammunition and gunpowder, and they had to send people to purchase gunpowder from the French or the Dutch. I can't remember which one. They had to purchase gunpowder and, and ammunition from a passing French ship as well. Otherwise, they would have to go to evacuate the colony. The Aboriginals almost wiped the colony out. They don't fucking teach you that. They you teach know, you that they want you to know. What do you know, um, I was just going to say, um, there's a lot of people making uh, comments about, because you're looking up, obviously, because you're looking over, you've got your screen projected, but mm. I think it's just a very sophisticated impression of David Blunkett. Okay. <laughs> that's that's very good, Jace. What do you do for an encore, by the way? Oh, I've got lots of that, mate. Tons of oh, it. Tons yeah. No one oh, of my. Yeah. Um... I I can't see the chats. They've stopped at eight thirty, and I'm not getting. They're not refreshing, so I can't see what people have got to say, which is probably a good thing. But some of the people in there, they should have their fingers cut off before they're allowed to come and listen to the radio. But that's all right. That's their opinion. They're allowed to have it. Well, listen. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion, and yeah. um, if you if if everyone just agreed all the time, it'd be a right boring world, wouldn't it? Indeed. Internet and, would be well, shit, wouldn't it? It'd just be full of fucking well, likes and fairies and fucking okay. all that sort of shit. And the same stuff, shit being reposted and reposted and reposted. You mean? Yeah. yeah. The only thing is, if we could get the get the the actual grid coordinates for all the nuggets in the chat, that would be good. So then I could call airstrikes in on them when I'm allowed to do it again because Uncle Vlad stopped me for now. So if we can figure out where these people are at, we'll sort them out later, but we won't do it just yet. What do you reckon? Yeah, of course. Whatever you say, it? Rob. We bow okay. to you. You're Australian, man. We, we, we love you, Aussies. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to tell me something I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I just well, did dinner. We love you, Aussies. Yeah. We, we didn't know that. Yeah, you, you know, it's really funny. Some of the Australian TV shows are bigger in the UK than they ever were here. You know, and one of them, oh, fuck, was I pissed off when it came onto TV? They kept saying, oh, we got this new show coming, got this new show coming. I tuned in on the first day. I wanted to commit fucking mass murder. It was called Home and Away. I thought it was a football show. It's a fucking soap opera. <laughs> um, I did, well, I thought it was a football show. Have you have you watched? Um, uh, I, I've just watched of a weekend, over a few days anyway. I watched that the uh, the thing on Netflix called Messiah. Have you seen that? Never heard of it. You should you should look it up and find it on the internet. Just watch it. Um, from from you know from a a point of view of different cultures and different. Is it different... a movie or a TV show? It's it's a Netflix show, so it's yeah, a ten I mean, part. It's, it's... Right, that's what we get. Okay, ten All part, right. ten part. Okay. So it's like forty-five minutes, fifty minutes. You know that sort of. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, get that. Have a look at that. It's um, it, it is really interesting. I just finished it. I think last night, and I, but it, it's like anything on Netflix. Whenever it ends. You know, you think, well, really? <laughs> mm. You know, that the, the ending sort of doesn't really... I don't know if there's going to be a season two on it, but I, I would imagine there will be because it's been quite mm. big. Okay. But well, there's well, a we Titanic talk. too, so... Yeah. Mm. Oh, boy. But, yeah, I, I, and, you know, if we're going to talk about Netflix series, one of the ones that I really liked, and it's just, re it's just come out with the third series, which I haven't started yet, is a Norwegian political thriller called Occupied. You guys seen that? No. No. Well, it's it's set in a future where a green type party is in power in Norway and they invent thorium reactors and so Norway shuts off its uh, hydrocarbon industry. No no oil, no gas. And the Russians invade and occupy Norway to keep the oil and gas going because they depend on it. And the EU won't stop the Russians, the Americans won't stop the Russians, and so they occupy Norway. And it's right. in Norwegian with subtitles, and as is the way, it's Scandinavian TV and movies are usually very good quality, and this is a very, very, very good program. Very good. 
and uh, you know I'm obviously biased towards Scandinavian stuff, but this is very good. I enjoyed it a lot. I haven't started Series 3 yet, but I'm going to get into it very shortly. And what was that called again? Occupied. And it's in uh, in English, I'm guessing, yeah? No, no, it's it's in Norwegian with English subtitles. Okay. It's very, very good program. Um, it's also in Russian with subtitles, but it's mainly in Norwegian. There's a bit of French in it as well, but... It's a very, very good show, and apparently it got huge ratings in Norway. And yeah, they've just they've just released the third series. Might even do a fourth if we're lucky. But it's interesting because I'm not really into TV so much. I don't even own a TV. I just don't see the point because of stupid advertisements and fucking TV for dead shits. And so I, I basically fucking drives me up the bastard wall. See fucking adverts. Adverts drive me up the fucking wall. But it's not just the advertisements. It's what they put on the TV. You get talk talk shows, for example, and so you sit there and you go, hang on, they're talking about a war with Iran. Who are they asking? Journalists. Why would you ask a journalist? Why don't you actually ask someone who's an expert in that field? If you had a cooking show, you wouldn't be asking a fucking plumber, would you? So why are you asking journalists? And oh well, it's this and it's fucking that. No, that's they're just the talking heads, aren't they? They're right. just talking. They're just talking heads. They're just yeah. repeaters. They're told Good what. Stuff. They don't even tell them what to say. They even write it down for them. It's called an auto cue. Indeed, that's a good song by Motorhead, Talking Head. But you know, it's a case of um, I look at the the talk shows and the reality shows, and it's like, what the fuck are you people doing? Now, if we go back to the 60s and 70s and you have a look at the TV shows coming out of America and Britain, it was proper fucking TV. It was very good. You compare it to the stuff that's coming out of America and Britain today, it don't even bother. And I'm not talking about the stuff on Netflix. I'm talking about on commercial free-to-air TV. Mm. And you look at it and it's like, take Doctor Who, for example. Do you know what I call it? I call that Urzat's Doctor Who. That's not fucking Doctor Who. It's the opposite. So back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, Doctor Who was the BBC would skimp on special effects and sets. So you'd have dodgy sets, dodgy costumes, dodgy special effects, fairly good scripts and storylines, and some decent acting. You go forward, they've got brilliant special effects, Brilliant costumes, shitty stories. Don't even worry about the fucking acting. So they flipped it. It's basically Doctor Who's a special effects show with everything tacked on. And I don't even watch it. I watched it for a bit and thought, fuck that shit. So for me, Doctor Who ended with Sylvester McCoy in 1989. I'm not interested in any others. And you have a look at the shows that came out in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s. It's nothing like what it is now. You can see the change. Go back and have a look at something like the goodies. There's nothing like that now. Or no, no. the professionals. Or the no, swing. If it, no, if it's, if, it's not a, uh, if it's not a reality show of some kind that somebody can sponsor mm. because they've got a sale on Monday. Yeah. Well, in Australia, there's a lot of reality stuff on TV, and it's a, it's interesting why that is. One of the main reasons is because of Australian law, a certain percentage of programming has to be Australian made. Guess what the cheapest possible type of TV to make is? Reality. Yeah, of course it is because we we, we traded quantity for we traded quality right. for quantity. quantity. Right. So. I don't go to my local pub anymore, but I used to go down there for the meals. The kitchen was very good. I'd go once a week, have a meal and that, and I'd be at the bar talking to people I know. They'd have the TV on, and it's like, what the fuck is this? And the, the TV shows, they're not even puerile. It's, and it's stupid stuff. Some of it has got an agenda. There's all these cop shows. And you can see it's slanted that the cops are the good guys and everyone that's not doing the right thing. Look at these idiots. You can see that. But then you've got all these people, celebrity fucking knockout and survivor series. And it's like, what are you doing? 
you're watching a show where all of these celebrities and and some fucking married at first sight and dating us like what the hell happened to the television i don't even bother with it netflix has got some very interesting programs and you know i have a look here and there and there's some very good shows i've always appreciated european cinema and tv some of the best television and movies i've ever seen french italian spanish german and you compare that to what's coming out of the uk and america and australia and it's like comparing a gold nugget to a fucking tic tac you guys have got tic tacs in the uk haven't you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. listen gents um in fact, I, think, I think you got one as the fucking prime minister TikTok. <laughs> no he's just a tit yeah uh, uh, listen rob uh, we uh, we're done we've gone six minutes over uh, we've done us two hours and we are knackered so um big thanks uh, to you for coming help. along again help to get good help they do two hours and they're knackered you know why you're fucking knackered you're rolling in and out to the kitchen all night you nugget yeah fucking getting this tomorrow jace He's meant to be the main host and he's rolling in and out of the kitchen to check on this fucking chippy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow night. We're going we're gonna to end this here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night with Jason Green. Um, it's Jason versus Jason. It's the Flat Earth debate. So uh, join us tomorrow night and uh, we'll see you then. Hey, I'll tell you one thing before you go. You know how you say about this Flat Earth debate. I can prove to you all politicians are wankers oh we know that because what do they do in parliament not a lot they no I mean, no they debate and there's a lot of them they're mass debating aren't they and that's that's the end of this one <laughs> there you go love you lots <laughs>